So you've got a terrain and you want vegetation on it. How do you do that in code? Easy. You click a button and there you go. You have vegetation in place. So this is what we're going to end up with at the end of this video. It's a really simple interface that allows us to control the placement of the trees using noise and a number of filters like height and slope and so on. So here we're planting the trees at the uh, steep areas but not at the very top and not in the flat area in the bottom. Really simple stuff but very effective. So let's have a look at how we can do this. I've created a simple demo here. Let's take a look at the demo first then we'll dig into how it works. We're going to open up our tools menu and this is the first simple solution of our placement. So we're going to generate a noise map and we have a noise map in the, in the green channel there. We'll leave the density at 50%. Let's bring a um, prefab in that we're going to place and then click place objects. And after a short while, we can see that we have placed a whole bunch of cylinders down on our terrain here based on that noise map. Let's show how that works in code. So up here is our code and we have two classes. The first class is our placement editor window, and that's what created the window that we had up there. Let's just bring that up here so we can see it. Okay, the menu item says where it's going to come up and it creates the window. This is the window we're going to create. Here's the GUI. We've got the bit for the texture at the top here that is creating this piece here. Then we've got the density slider that creates the amount of as we're going to place in there and we have our prefab object and then finally our button. So if we scroll down, we have our actual placement algorithm here. And um, what the placement does is it iterates at one meter intervals across our whole terrain, grabs a value from the noise map that we had, that's this noise map that we've created here. The density is gonna be higher the more dense we have it, and therefore we're taking one minus the density to have the noise floor that we want for something to appear. If it is above that noise floor, then we calculate the position on the terrain and instantiate the object and set it to our parent reason we set to the parent is so we can delete them all in one go. So where does that noise map come from? Well, I click the generate noise button before, which is up here. And what we're doing there is we're saying, well, give me a noise texture, which is the same size as the terrain and has a scale of five. We can change the scale, but for now we're hard coding it. And then call out to this get noise map function that we've created. So I have a noise class over here and that allows us to use the built-in noise function of Unity to give me a noise map. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a texture, I'm iterating over every pixel in that texture, I'm reading the Perlin noise from the noise function in Unity, and I'm setting the pixel to the value of the noise in that location. Just putting it in the green channel so we can use the other channels for other data later on. Then we apply all those changes and we return the noise map back. And that is how we created the noise map. We could, of course, just drag one in there, but it's convenient to just click a button. So there you go. That's how this works. But there's a limitation with this. That is that all of the cylinders are being placed exactly on the one meter intervals, which we don't really want. So what we want to do there is create some variation in the placement. So here is how you do that variation. It's in this line here. We're just going to add a random offset to the X and Z values of minus 0.5 to 0.5. So each point is going to move just up to half a meter in any direction. And what it looks like in practice, if we just click the place objects and zoom in, I also changed the texture to green, the material to green so that we can see it a little better. But you can see they're all now randomly offset and it looks a lot better. And so we have our forested areas, I guess. Now I'm just gonna delete all those and show you what happens if we decrease the density. We just get a tiny area there. If we increase it a bit from there, delete those ones, click place objects again. It's taking a little longer because we're now placing many more objects. One way we can do better is to use a fitness function to decide which of these plants should survive. So to do that, I'm going to first of all get rid of these objects that we've placed. 
so that we have a nice clean terrain. I'm also then going to go in and I'm going to use a tool called Terrain Wizard, which is a, a tool I've published that enables me to very quickly create a terrain to work in. Let's go with Central Plains. We'll stick with the Mountain Valley biome, click Generate, and this just creates a simple random terrain for me. There's lots of control in this application, but I'm going to keep it nice and simple for now. So there we go. We have our terrain. This is a very small terrain I'm going to just increase the steepness and the height a fair bit on this one because I want to illustrate what happens when you put a fitness function in that will allow a plant to survive on steep ground or shallow ground or high ground or whatever there you go that's better we've got more variation in steepness and height now okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to break out some of this code into a separate fitness function so this is going to be a private static float fitness we won't send any parameters in just yet we'll build it up as we go along the first thing that we want to do is grab our noise map value inside of there and then we're going to return it right and then we're going to change that variable name to fitness because we're going to mess with that outside of what the noise map is doing now we need the noise map texture that is passed in by a parameter up here so that is our first parameter that we need here and we're going to also have to pass that in as a parameter to the fitness function or oh, not value noise map texture there we go. So we need our coordinates coming in. So let's grab those two. So X and Y, X and Z. And we're going to need them in here. Float X, float Z. Oh, they're integers, not floats. There we go. So those are the coordinates on the texture that we're going to sample. So in theory, that will just work as is. So if we go over to our unity we take out the previous placed items and we see we get the exact same things it's using the same noise map function so that's great we have now separated that out into a fitness function so let's change the fitness now let's do something super simple just to illustrate this so we're going to add to this a random number between minus 0 0.25 and plus 0 0.25 and we need to indicate that they're floats. And now what we're doing is we're randomizing the fitness. So if we come over to Unity and remove the currently placed objects, click Place Objects again, we find that it is changed. We do still see the noise pattern in here, but we are seeing fewer uh, items in areas where the noise was weaker. And in some cases, we're actually seeing more. So it's spread out a little bit more into these other areas. So that already looks better in many ways, but it's still entirely random. So let's reduce the effect of that randomness. And we'll regenerate just so we can see that. There we go. That's a little better. It's a little bit more intense change. But we also want to do things like not have it appearing on these steep slopes here. We don't want, for example, our trees to be appearing on steep slopes or on too high a ground. So let's put in a function of curve that will prevent them appearing on very steep slopes, like these ones here, for example. All right, how are we going to do that? First, have a look at what it looks like. So this is what it looks like when we have implemented this we're not getting it on the slopes as described this is the odd occasional one comes through because that's just how it works right so how do we do this well here we've changed the fitness function for now i've completely taken out the randomness so that we can see the difference clearly and then we have this little simple um, piece of code here that grabs the steepness from the terrain using get steepness this uses a value of zero to one it's a normalized position on the terrain uh, we're saying if it's over 30, then subtract 0.7 from the fitness. Now, we'll parameterize this later, but for now, that will do just fine. And that means now that when we 
Play objects, if I delete that and hit place, you can see that we're getting the effect that we want. And we can do, okay, so let's do that exact same thing with heights now. So we're gonna copy that and just paste it in. And we're going to need to make a few changes here. For example, this is now gonna be height. We're gonna use get height. Now, for some strange reason, this uses the, the integer values, not the normalized values. I don't know why it's inconsistent across the different methods. There's probably a good reason for it, but I have no idea what it is. So you just have to figure it out. And let's go with, say, 45 meters. This isn't a very high terrain. So over here, we can now go and place our objects. And you see, we're not getting that clump up here because that's too high. If I just show you the one without the height in, and you can see that there are trees up here as well. So let's just illustrate that a little bit more strongly. We'll get rid of those that we've just done. And we're going to go back and we're going to regenerate this terrain, but we're going to put more height on it. We're going to have it much higher. And that way we will be able to see this more drastically, I guess is the word. So if we zoom in here, we should see that this is much steeper and much higher in places. Now we've got much more steepness. So let's now place our objects. And you can see that we're not getting any up here. It's way too steep. We're getting some here as it goes up and there's even a little clump here. If we go in close, we should see that that's leveled off there, you see? So it's not so steep and it's managed to get some trees in there. So we're getting to be much more realistic. Let's just quickly put the randomization back in and see what effect that gives us. We'll get rid of these ones that we just spawned and hit place objects and this will give us a little bit more of a random feel to it there's still very clearly this noise map in here but we're seeing more of the randomization in these kinds of areas here where it's on the edge of being too steep or too high so we're getting to something that looks pretty good now how do we put those values that we've just created into the editor over here? So here's what we want the UI to look like. We're going to have a max height slider and a max steepness slider. And they're really easy to do. You could do a lot more than this, but we're just going for something quick and simple right now. So we're going to need two new variables, max height and max steepness. We're going to give them defaults of 130 respectively. Then we need to add those into the UI. So that's these two lines here. We've got a slider going from 0 to 1,000 for height. Later on, we might capture the height from the terrain and, and make that dynamic, but this will do for now. And the steepness is always from 0 to 90 degrees. So then we need to be able to pass those into our place objects. So we've added in max height and max steepness. Now, I don't like this now. This is starting to get really, really long. And if we start putting minimum heights and other variables in there, there's all sorts of new things that are going to appear. So this doesn't look right. It's what's called a smell for me in code. It means I need to come back and refactor that. So I'm going to take a note for myself. Refactor. Provide a fitness parameters struct for objects, right? That will be to minimize the amount of data being passed in methods. And you'll see why when we come down here, because we also have to pass that information into our fitness function. So we're now passing additional information in here. So if we had a load of that character in a struct, then we'd be able to just pass that struct around. But this line, other than having that extra data passed in, doesn't change. And then in here, we're capturing those and we've replaced our hard-coded values. Click Place Objects. We now see that we're able to control how it's placed. If I decrease down to maybe 88 and decrease the steepness, take out these objects and hit place objects you can see we're still getting them up here but we're not getting them on the slopes here let's reduce that down to say 50 see what we get here okay now we're not getting them high here so again this terrain isn't particularly high so we're keeping these values quite low but different terrains will require different values now let's remove that code smell it's always a good idea to remove smells very quickly after you spot them. So what we need to do here is we need to create this new placement gene struct, which is down here. And we have our density, our max height, and our max steepness, the three values that we're currently using to decide where to place these objects. 
And what does that do? Well, it replaces the equivalent parameters in the top here. We need to make sure that we always have a placement genes object. So we're doing that in on enable. Now this causes a problem and I'll show you what that problem is later to do with resetting the values. But we'll fix that in a moment. But first of all, let's make this work as is. So then we can come down and when we were using max height earlier, we now say genes max height, okay? And same with steepness and density. And when we actually call out to place the objects, we're now passing the genes instead of the individual parameters. And that enables us to do is to just add parameters in as we wish. I mentioned that this approach will cause a problem. Let me show you what that is. We were creating a new means object in the on enable of this window. So if I close the window and reopen it again, all the values I had in there have gone. They haven't been persisted. So we need to fix that. So the way we're going to do this in on enable, instead of initializing a new object every time, we're actually going to try and load the object. And we're going to hand that off to the placement gene struct look at how we do that in a moment. In on disable, we're going to save the object so that it's always there. Now, what's this gene save name? It's just a parameter which calculates a unique name for this product and this particular scene. So we can save them on a per product per scene basis. So how does the load and save work? Well, that's down here. In the load method, we're saying if we already have a value, just load it in. And we're going to use JSON to pass it from a string into an object and return that object. If we don't have a value, create a default one to get started. And then in the save, just the same thing. We're going to save the JSON into the string. If we go over here and we just change one of these values to height to 609, close that down and then reopen it, closing it would have called on disable. So it saved it. And there is our 609. So let's take a look at this after I've done a little bit more work. I've generated a larger terrain. This is uh, a little bit bigger and you see it has a bit more variation in its uh, texturing and itness and so on. So let's see what we get here. If I have all of the different um, genes that we've here, uh, what that enables me to control much more precisely what is happening. Now, because this is a bigger terrain, it takes a lot longer to spawn, but here you see the uh, results of randomization, no filtering of location or anything. We get a tree every one meter. You can see it's very rigid in this bottom picture here. If we take those out and put in the noise map, I'm going to have to read. And now if we play again, it'll take a little while, but we can see the noise map is coming into play here. That's great. So let's add in some randomness to the location and the effectiveness or of each of those locations or natural results coming in here but let's say we want this to be mostly on the hills so let's up the, uh, the, the that little bit and delete those a rigid line at the bottom here it's all coming all the way up to the top so it's perhaps a bit high let's bring that down a little and try again very tops but we are getting them on these very steep places here so we probably want to introduce the steepness and let's say only up to 46 and we can remove both of these sets of objects it's rule in place and now you're seeing we're only getting on the fairly flat bits so that looks pretty good to me that looks like it could be a mountain pine type uh, tree called one just coming down the hill where it flattens out a little bit we could allow it to go a little steeper than that so let's remove those objects and spawn again now they on some of the steep objects you have quite a lot of control using this approach um, we could increase into um, an initial place you can see it looks great around these cliffs it's following the actual line of the soil that exists so this is for a very simple system is very effective, but we can do much better than this. And in later videos, I'll show you how to turn these into actual trees. We'll also perhaps look at genetic algorithms for figuring out how to place these uh, in more clumps of different types of plants and so on. But for now, I think quite enough. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, see you again. Bye bye.